Riveting content. Empowering your life. Welcome to The Sphere. This episode is sponsored by Houston Housewives of Finance. For more information on increasing your cash flow, becoming your own money manager, and to schedule your complimentary personal finance strategy, contact the Houston Housewives of Finance today at 1-844-700-4463. Elite Dental Wellness. At Elite Dental Wellness, Dr. Ashandra Batiste understands that one of the biggest obstacles is dental fear. The vision at Elite Dental Wellness is to ensure every patient is treated with respect, ultimate care, patience, and love. Call us today to make an appointment at area code 713-789-8680. Looking to advertise? Join the Sphere's vast demographic reach of thousands of people all over the world. Send an email today to advertise at thesphere.tv or call us at area code 832 732-7789. Welcome back to A La Carte, your premier cooking show. I'm your host, Chef Jones, with Good Meal Deals Personal Chef Services. You can find me on any social media, Instagram, Facebook. Just look for that colorful, friendly pot of fruits and veggies. Um, How you doing? Beautiful weather outside today. <laughs> Gorgeous weather outside today. <laughs> I've been waiting for this all week. All Hello, week. everyone. I am your um, co-host, Chef Lornette, with Helping Hands Food Delivery and Catering, and where we deliver big, bold flavors, fresh ingredients, and good food. So welcome back to A La Carte, as Chef Robin said. We are have another great episode for you guys today. A lot of interesting um, things that we're going to cover in the food-based news section today. So I think it's going to be a, a very interesting day today very interesting <laughs> we have some interesting news period yes yes like i was just watching this on tv mm-hmm. and i think it's kind of crappy but i'm gonna wait till we get to the tea because okay this is something that people want to hear about because this is gonna change we life. have tea today tea on the cooking show today okay you guys yes, tea so as always on a la carte we bring you guys um, food-based news safety and cooking tips educational things and of course recipes and how to's um execute those recipes in the kitchen and in our food-based news today we are talking about our lovely um number 45 and <laughs> <laughs> President Trump, and Trump. we are discussing his new plan plan of action to these. reduce the SNAP benefits or food stamps, as most people know them, yes. and introduced harvest boxes. Okay, and which I harvest don't think boxes. is going to work. It's so, it's just it's going to be wasteful. I think it's going to be wasteful as well. Um, so. Um, <laughs> He wants to replace food stamps with a food box. So to me, they've um, likened this to the Blue Apron subscriptions. Mm. So I am very curious to see how it would work. But if we go back to the article, we can read directly from the article. Um, They're proposing to cut the food stamp benefits up to $130 million, which is a lot of money. So I'm assuming a lot of resources. Oh, yeah. But this is not the first time they've cut the budget. Mm. So they've done that before. So it, to me, you're already running on slim selections, and oh, yeah. supposedly I've I seen a couple of the boxes when they were showing like what was a lot them? of yeah, like peanut butter, canned foods, and you know a lot of people they comments about it was like you know people get the stamps they buy what they need depending mm-hmm. on the needs, dietary needs, or if they got allergies, mm-hmm. or you know it was. I don't like and it. And assuming that <laughs> the government would take all of those things into account, it's going to be very time consuming. Yes. I, it just sounds like a failure waiting to happen. Wasteful, so y'all. What they've proposed <laughs> is that um, these boxes are going to be time saving, money saving, and just all around more effective. I don't see how, and I don't think many other people see how. So, my question, aside from the political implications and mm-hmm. the political standpoint just strictly going off of a food based standpoint so we're we're going from a chef standpoint okay yes. um <laughs> is this going to be healthier for children families elderly because they're getting this supposed you know box of great things is it going to be more beneficial to them is it going to promote cooking is it going to yeah. promote using fresh ingredients um that was my question and i don't see any of the answers being yes 
I see I don't think so either. to your point it being more wasteful mm-hmm. and people having this fresh ingredients but not a recipe quote unquote to, to follow, follow. Yeah. not a plan of action but just this list of fresh ingredients that have been deemed healthy by the administration and nothing to do with them so yeah so I don't I don't I don't agree with it no. so this unprepared food box versus unprepared Actually, food groceries that you can well shop. yeah well I guess generally what people do with food snaps is actually going to the store, buying things where you got to just, it's instructions that come with it. Mm-hmm. It's not like, oh, we give you a can of this. It's like almost with the boxes, it seemed like it'll be a bunch of random items put in the box. Mm-hmm. And so I guess you get in these boxes every month. It's going to be wasteful because people are not going to use it. They don't know what to do with it. Well, my thing and also, so, produce, um, herbs certain vegetables Mm -hmm. those things have a very limited shelf time shelf lifetime so how often are these boxes going to be delivered how do are they delivered or do they have to pick them up um do they go to the grocery store and pick them up or are they delivered to their home so first of all when you're saving money on the actual food stamps but you're (laughs) now implementing costs for delivery for putting the boxes assembly They're putting the boxes more together expensive. you're you're it's adding costs expensive. as well as removing costs and so. another question that i had just listening with it on the news the other day like mm-hmm. how many boxes are they getting in a month total you know? yeah is it one again it to one the shelf box? life of the products is it one box or is it weekly is it bi-weekly mm. what if i want you know beans this week but i want my fresh herbs <laughs> next week you know and my yeah. box is is I don't get another delivery for it. Did they say anything about actually having like a protein, a beef or chicken? It didn't, or? I didn't see anything specified in the article about what would be in the box, except wow. it would mimic pre-approved foods from the food stamp program. Okay. Um, but it still requires, if that's the case, it's still going to require them to go to the store to get other ingredients. That almost sounds like they trying to be cheap and get people powdered eggs or like fake <laughs> cheese. Like the military ration meals. <laughs> that's what it sounds like to me. Like people are not going to be happy with this because it's like they're trying to save money, but they're trying to be cheap, but they're not giving people quality. And it's just. I feel like it's going <laughs> to reduce um, the number of choices for sure. It will. Because you're. what if I don't like that brand? And maybe um, I think what they're trying to do is get more people to not reply. Well, rely so much on SNAP benefits. I mm-hmm. mean, but I mean. Well, a point in the article was that. Well, a point that number 45 made a reason for it was for to reduce cost and to reduce fraud but then the report on fraud said that the fraud in the snap okay. program was 1.5 percent and there's the, there's some percentage. large number in the millions of people who are receiving benefits mm-hmm. but the number of fraud the percentage of fraud is 1.5 percent so i mean Come i on. think we have other things we can focus on um yes yeah, hunger <laughs> out here is people that's actually hungry so and give those the boxes to the the, the people who can't who don't have so a shelter. I wonder, I wonder how the process is going to go. Is the process going to change as far as how they get the stamps? Because you know they got to apply. You got to put your income. That mm-hmm. almost sounds like you need to just be giving those boxes now to the homeless people too. Well, so back to the so back to the food based part of it. Yeah. What about the elderly who <sighs> can't cook? And so when they do shop, they shop within their their means of getting their, what they can well within their the qualifications of the food stamps but they buy particular things you know yeah. mm. you have a choice at that point like yes you are limited to what you can purchase in the grocery store with the food stamps with or mm. with the card but you still have a choice you do it sounds like <laughs> all the choices are just being taken away and this is the box and this is what you have and yeah. cook this and eat that and so now it's we're dictating your dietary needs and consumption as well so and it also sounds like they're trying to make uh to where it's a base pay because you know the pay ranges depending on how many people you're feeding is mm-hmm. this going to be a small box is it going to be a big box you're going to get two boxes at this one time like yeah it's a lot of things that goes into this so it's, it's something i don't really understand it i don't like it um so what do you guys think yeah what do you guys think about this because i know this is a very sensitive topic especially when it comes to food and the SNAP benefits, period, because a lot of people I know, they, they use those. Mm-hmm. Uh, so all in all, the main reasons from the government <laughs> supposedly were to lessen fraud and to save costs, right? Mm-hmm. So it kind of segues into this portion of the show has been sponsored by Houston Housewives of Finance. 
and the um, Houston Housewives wanted us to know that only four states in the United States offer financial education. Mm. 33% or more than 77 million of Americans don't pay their bills on time. 39% of Americans carry credit card debt from month to month and 39% of adults say they don't have enough savings. Don't become one of these statistics. Let the Houston Housewives of Finance advise you on increasing your cash flow and becoming your own money manager by scheduling your complimentary fin personal financial strategy. Contact Houston Housewives of Finance today at 1-844-700-4463 or email us at info at HoustonHousewivesOfFinance.com. Ask how you can participate in a complimentary financial literacy workshop near you. Houston Housewives of Finance are the new faces of the new age of financial services. That is right. So, I mean, if they want to save some money, they can contact the Houston Housewives of Finance. That's who they need to contact <laughs> <laughs> with these cuts they're trying to make. You know? They don't make sense. These cuts don't make sense at all. And it sounds like it's not even helping the people. It's hurting the people. But that's just the primary goal of Donald Trump. I just I don't mean, Well, we don't, we don't know because we haven't seen it implemented. Okay. And it possibly could be beneficial somehow, some way. Yeah. But from a food standpoint, I hmm. feel like is it going to achieve? You know, we had the whole get fit, get active, get fit thing with yeah. Michelle Obama and they were introducing, you know, it had a push for fruits and vegetables and the mm -hmm. whole plate and how you're supposed to eat and what's a good portion size. So my thing is, is there still going to be some form of education behind, it. behind yeah. this new harvest box? And mm. how, how are they going <laughs> to implement fresh ingredients? Because a yeah. big part of the health crisis is healthy, what we're eating, what, what's being consumed. So when you have families and children relying on this for nutritional value, yeah, what education is going to come behind it what additional mm. resources are going to go into it to make sure that they're getting exactly what they need yeah and not all carbs and all starch because it don't sound like they get no meat no time soon i didn't me. see that you know how are you gonna <laughs> it another again back to options so <laughs> if you can purchase meat if i'm not mistaken with yeah. the card so do you tell me what kind of chicken i can get do i have to get you gotta get chicken, chicken? breast if you like can I get skinless, boneless chicken thighs? Yeah. I mean, what you know? <laughs> or they give you pork chops and you don't eat pork? Yeah, or? I want a steak this week. I mean, we're going to live it up, you know? I mean, as long as you are responsible, truthful in how you obtain them, responsible in how you use them, you should be able to eat what you want, I personally feel. I feel the same way. Some people need help. That's a fact. That does not mean they should not be able to eat but they fresh want ingredients, eat, fresh ingredients, good quality. A steak anything. or some shrimp every now and then, some scallops, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. But how are the, how is that going to be monitored? How is that going to be dictated in the mm -hmm. in the box in the harvest box? Wow, I think that's a really good question. That is a great question. Something to think about. We all are probably scratching our heads right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I feel like the the biggest concern is that this idea was released with no supportive information. Yeah, so it was. was just hey, we're gonna. We it's just like a thump. It. It's like a thump in the head, you yeah. know. Like, hey, this is what we're doing. Either get with the program or you get off the program. This is what we want to do, but we don't know how we're going to do it yet. But this is what we're going to do. So yeah. I'm, I'm really curious to find out how this all plays out. <laughs> yes, it's been a lot of good stuff on the news. Like, mm, good is relative. <laughs> 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 well, I won't say that, but I mean, some, it's, some, it's, some things. There's lots of changes going on. Yes. Especially with our food and how we eat. So, guys, beware is, is basically um, for our food-based news section. Beware of the changes that are being implemented in the program. Beware yep. of the things that are going on. And just stay up to date with, you know, what requirements you're going to be held liable to. So, hmm. But we definitely want to hear We're going to see strikes problem. about this soon. Once I'm sure. This, if once this comes to pass... We're going to see people striking. They already so, be out there striking. So maybe if, if the boxes are a set box, maybe we can come up with a few recipes to help people. That's what we can do. Yeah. We can do that. So we'll probably try to get a box. We're, we don't know if no, the... No, we can just find out what's in the boxes. Find out what's in the boxes? Yeah. Okay. And then, you know, we're all about helping the people. That sounds like it might be a little difficult because, I mean, we well, don't know how, how you, many boxes how is think, out there. I mean, we, But that's how they probably feel, How do feel you think too. they feel when they receive a box? Y'all feel the same way. Y'all yeah. ain't going to know what to do with it. So maybe we can go through some some basics, some one-on-ones type deals we'll think yeah. of some things for you we guys. think of that don't worry don't worry we take we do a q a get yeah. some questions and answers live but y'all got to make sure y'all subscribing yes. and following sharing so y'all can participate in this live 
Absolutely. So what we're going to do to all of our Facebook Live viewers, um, we ask that you guys subscribe to our show on all major platforms, including iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, and Stitcher. Review our show on iTunes with constructive feedback. Any questions or feedback that you guys want to give, share this Facebook live post with the entire show with your family and friends. Make sure you donate to our mission to bring enriched and inspiring content each and every week. Okay? Oh, you can yeah. also donate at <laughs> www.thesphere.tv slash donate. And um, that way you guys can keep continue to contribute to the cause. Oh, yeah. So all of our Facebook live viewers, we appreciate you joining us today. And we hope that you guys have some comments, feedback for us on this topic of the yes, harvest boxes. We want to hear it. We, we look it. forward to hearing from you guys on that topic so we can go over some um, Yeah, so they some can definitely, details. you know, follow us, message us on the social media. Mm -hmm. um, even you can email us, all yes. of that good stuff. So. A la carte at thesphere.tv. Mm-hmm. So, so Facebook Live, it's been great. Make sure you guys are subscribed and following so you can get the full episodes. And we're going to continue into our recipe. Just a little teaser today. Yes, we our, do. Our um, recipe it's is, we're talking about bacon today. Bacon, y'all. Okay? Bacon and chicken. All Come about on. bacon. So <laughs> sweet and spicy bacon wrapped chicken is our recipe for today. So make sure so good. you are subscribed so you can get the full episode. You don't want to miss this one. Don't so, want to miss it. We'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs> Man, that was some good news. Yeah. That was a, a something that I wanted to talk about, the news, because I was like, man. Yeah. It was either that or something else, but this was a good topic to yes, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's definitely something that's affecting yeah. everyone. It's going to take a big hit yeah. on everybody. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, part of what we were discussing with the harvest boxes was that we feel it will be wasteful. Wasteful. So one Very. topic we want to discuss <laughs> in our safe uh, education, food-based education, is how mm -hmm. to eliminate food waste. Yeah. And this is for everyone. You know, if you're receiving the Harvest Box, ways to repurpose food and mm -hmm. not be wasteful. And if you just are grocery shopping, shopping yeah. how to buy in proportion to the sizes that you're going to yeah, cook. Yeah, just be more efficient, you know. I feel like, honestly, with just my little tip before we actually get into it, mm -hmm of reducing waste in the home because I don't feel like we can completely eliminate it because we're going to still have some type of form of waste. Yeah. But I feel like people, if people treat their pantries in their houses and mm -hmm. refrigerators and freezers, how restaurants do as inventory, you need to know what you have. Yeah. Well, part of that's organization. Yeah. So um, that's what we're here to teach them today, how to, yes, it is. So how to do need that. So get y'all pens, papers, get your pen and pad markers, ready. crayons, whatever you got out there to write. <laughs> Get these, get these uh, tips. The so, tips, yes. So we I was are. Say get the tea. Get, well, the tea. Get it's your tea cup too. ready. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's tea and tips, all in the same. So we're reducing waste or food waste at mm -hmm. home. Okay. So there's yes. a couple different ways that you guys can do that, and we have a spreadsheet for you to show you those things. Um, a couple of tips. Mm -hmm. So keep a running list of all the meals and their ingredients that your household already enjoys. So yeah. if there's a recipe that you know you cook a lot of the times, make sure you keep you just have it there. Ready. Keep those ingredients on deck. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, make your shopping list based on how many meals you eat at home. So not just on what you're going to cook, but how many times you're going to eat at home. So basically, you're asking yourself, "Am I going to eat out this week? How often am I going to eat out this week?" Yeah. And that lets you know well, I only That's need to prepare very for a few meals, right? That is very important. Plan your meals for the week before you go shopping and buy only the things needed for those meals. Another really, really important thing to do. And um, know your grocery store. You have to know So your this grocery is a store. tip when you say plan your meals. You have to know your grocery store mm -hmm. because when I go into my store, I know that all of my fresh ingredients are to the left, yeah. my meats are straight ahead, and all of the frozen and See? dairy are to the right. Everybody else so, know that, so they go on a whole adventure like, oh, I'm looking for this. Or I guess the pattern of how they shop, mm -hmm. they kind of jump from here to this side to that. So and when you're exerting energy, you're making yourself hungry, <laughs> you're going to buy more food. Also, if you health wise, if yes. you can abstain from going down the middle aisles of the grocery store, then typically you're shopping in a healthier fashion. Yeah. You can get everything you need to make all of those things in the boxes that are on the interior aisles on the perimeter of the grocery store. Yeah. So the perimeter So you is don't have to go down the whole Exactly. Aisle, so. The perimeter includes your fresh herbs, fresh ingredients, fruits, mm -hmm. produce, 
your meat um, counter where we buy our food for yeah. the show. How we've explained to you guys to go into the actual go the butcher or the, the seafood day. counter or the meat counter versus buying frozen. And then your fresh dairy, eggs, milk, mm-hmm. whipping cream, things of that nature. All of these things are on the perimeter. So if you yep. notice, the grocery store is set up for that reason. Mm-hmm. All of the things, fresh ingredients are on the perimeter. And then on the interior aisles, it's boxed foods um, canned goods and, and canned goods, ingredients, and things like that. So I feel like if you can stay on the perimeter, one, you'll you, be okay. well, you shop cheaper because yes, it, it's cheaper. We've shown you guys that on the show, <laughs> and it's healthier. It is much I'll, healthier. I'm so. off my soapbox now. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> they needed that just to hear that. A lot of people don't know that, though, so yeah. it's like. Hey. So know your grocery store. Know the Have store before to. you go in. And it keeps you from wandering because once you get on those interior aisles, you start to see things and they're placed that way for a reason. It's shop, you know, eye level and then above. And it's meant for you to want to purchase. So Yeah, they make it look real pretty. Yes. So last, um, well, <laughs> next tip, look in your refrigerator and cupboards first. To yes. avoid buying food that you already you have. have. And that's and a big one. It is. Make a list of what needs to be used up with upcoming meals. Yeah. So another way to avoid it is to actually make your grocery list or make mm-hmm. your meals list based on what you already have. Yeah. So a lot of people shop like, mm, I'm in the mood for X, Y, and Z. And so they go grocery shopping, but they yeah. still have all the ingredients to make something else oh, in their pantry. Cart. With, yeah. Yeah. So you technically you didn't need to go grocery shopping. It's probably you like a last it. minute thought. So they like, okay, I want to make this, and they're not thinking about like maybe I got this. Mm-hmm. And you know, I cook in a lot of kitchens, and I be in a lot of people's pantries, mm-hmm. and I see it. Like one it's of my clients organized. had seven bottles of Hershey chocolate <laughs> syrup, four open in the refrigerator, everyone refrigerator, three closed in the pantry. That's crazy. Yes, and that is a pet peeve of mine. Don't open a new one <laughs> if. The current one is still. It was so many open. I was just like, oh my, oh my gosh. gosh. So I didn't have to worry about the chocolate. But since we are talking about chocolate yeah. and wasteful, we don't want to waste our teeth. So, you know, this portion of the show is sponsored by Elite Dental Wellness. So, at Elite Dental Wellness, our vision is to create a welcoming practice that will offer exceptional dental care and a lifetime of dental wellness. We are committed to the finest possible oral care and the overall health and well-being of our patients. Elite Dental Wellness is built upon a foundation of integrity, expertise, and service. Through our commitment to modern dentistry, continual education, and friendly atmosphere, we strive to make our patients feel that they are a part of our family. Dentistry can be scary, daunting, and uncomfortable, but Dr. Baptiste and her team work tirelessly to ensure your comfort. So make sure you make your appointment today with Dr. Sandra Baptiste at Elite Dental Wellness by calling 713-789-8680. And as I always say, make sure you say the sphere 10% off, mm-hmm. y'all. It's the top of the year. You need that. Calculate that down. You're going to see that little that little bit goes a long way. So the Houston Housewives of Finance would appreciate you being financially smart they would that's like a duo come on <laughs> get you a free literacy and 10 percent. that's yes that's just the way to go so to continue with our <laughs> ways to eliminate waste or minimize waste we are now talking about now preparation tips and that is very, very so important. originally we were talking about purchasing <laughs> and mm-hmm. storing tips now we're talking about preparation yes so in prep yep things you can do um freeze items such as bread sliced fruit um, or meat that you know you will not be able to eat before it expires. You know, that's something that's very important. I do it myself. And some people are like, well, why do you freeze it, the quality? But I know I'm not home a lot. Things go bad. Mm-hmm. And so if you do it the proper way, it will maintain quality. It will maintain. If you, I don't, I have a vacuum seal machine. Uh, vacuum. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, mm-hmm. know, you know, the seal machine. Yes. <laughs> but I use that vacuum seal it. Put it in there. You and know? even if you don't have a vacuum seal machine, mm-hmm. a vacuum sealer, what you can do, they have freezer yeah. Ziploc bags. They have Ziploc bags specifically for, for the freezing. freezing. Yeah. Put the food in there. Get all the air out. Zip yep. it. It lasts 
long enough for you to take it out and eat it again. It does. And the quality is not affected. The taste, everything about it is still really, really good. So that's so good you can also cut your time in the kitchen by preparing and freezing your meals ahead of time, what we just explained. So not yeah. just individual components and ingredients, but actually cooking a meal and freezing it. Yep. And then um, prepare and cook your perishable items, then freeze them for use throughout the month. Yep. So things that go bad, you know, go ahead, prepare them, cook them store them somehow and freeze them and that will also be like um as- along with the prepping and things like you know you about to cook your meals you cut your peppers mm-hmm. your bell peppers and freeze them mm-hmm. or you cut um onions bell onions. peppers uh, tomatoes don't freeze too well they turn kind of slushy yeah certain things you can definitely freeze garlic yeah um and they'll last they'll yeah. last just got to let them thaw Jalapenos, off. any kind of hot pepper or sweet pepper, yeah, all those things. Anything, it lasts. And just like <laughs> we told you, we've showed you guys before, we had an episode where we showed you how to make herb butter for cooking. Oh, yeah. Um, you can chop Ooh. your herbs with olive oil and butter and make little cubes. So things that you can help and prepare. And freeze it and it lasts mm-hmm. so long. It, was, it lasts for about 60 days, if I'm not mistaken, from yeah. our episode. And then you have storage tips. So find out how to store your fruits and vegetables so that they stay fresh longer inside and um, outside of the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Not all fruits and vegetables need to be in the refrigerator. I know it's kind of habit. But if you store them properly, they will last longer. They will. And, you know, another thing before we jump from prep, just want to explain the reason behind actually freezing, like, your peppers and all of that. Because, you know, a lot of people don't know that when you put things in there together, it gives off a natural gas. Mm -hmm. Like your peppers and onions, and that'll be the reason why it spoils other things around it, mm-hmm. even in if, the refrigerator. In the refrigerator too, and it spoils because your food gives off natural gases. It's not bad; it's just yeah. a natural thing that food do. And that's why you see, if you leave it in too long, it gets soft or stale. It gets mm-hmm. moldy. Um, that's just the natural, like she said, natural emission from the fruits and vegetables. Mm-hmm. That is it. And then, of course, we have our last way of reducing food waste would be um, freezing and preserving surplus fruits and vegetables, especially seasonal items. Yes. So things that you can only buy during certain times of the year. Um, For me, one of these things is okra. (laughs) Oh, for me, it's cranberries. I'm not a cranberry fan, but I am an (laughs) okra fan. Oh, and it's really hard to find yeah, okra, okra at certain yeah. times of the month or the year, not the month, certain times yeah. of the year. And it get real expensive too. It does. Like, it can go from like eighty nine cents a pound to two ninety nine a pound. Almost three yeah. dollars. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's ridiculous to me. So Crazy. cranberries are cranberries one. Cranberries the same thing. You mm-hmm. get expensive. You can get a whole bunch of bags. Yeah. When that time come, then they expensive. They like three dollars and up. Yeah. Even fresh fruit, strawberries, raspberries, mm-hmm. blueberries definitely something to do i've done um in the past i'll make put i use an ice cube tray oh, and just put okay. them in an ice cube tray so that's a good idea you can either use them for waters for flavored waters we can mm-hmm. use them for dec- decor for our catering events it just um the, just the ice tray became a very popular because then we just put them in a ziploc freezer bag to save them they're in the freezer okay so definitely fruits certain vegetables so that's the way to save. That's the way to do it. I wouldn't, I'm personally, I wouldn't freeze my bread. I'll keep it refrigerated. I feel like refrigeration is okay for mm-hmm. bread, but freezing. It'll still get mold if you want to keep it long term. Yeah, if it come out in the moisture and everything. Because yeah. so. it, it'll still eventually mold in the refrigerator. But if you freeze it, you can um, defrost it. It's so like if you buy in bulk, mm-hmm. like bread is usually two for three or three for five or something like that so if you're a, a couponer or if you shop for price um i like personally i shop for price so if, yes. if bread is cheaper <laughs> for me to get two loaves i'll get two loaves and then we're just gonna have something that i need bread for that week in our in our cooking yeah um or if i have a coupon or something like that so we will keep one coupons, out man. use that one and then freeze the second loaf mm-hmm. so that it doesn't mold or get damaged and then once we take the second loaf out, you completely defrost it. You give it time to completely defrost, and then yep. you can use it as you would a normal loaf of bread. However you want to do it. Mm-hmm. Make your peanut butter and jelly. Make your toast in the morning. Or you use it, use it inside of a meatloaf. Oh, I was we use say it meatloaf. for a bread pudding. Like there's many different ways. Make you some breadcrumbs for your yeah. Italian stuff, mushrooms exactly. that we discussed last week. You exactly. Know? exactly. Make your <laughs> own breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs, and it's so much better than and actually save buying. You some money. And you save money. Yeah. Come on, you get more breadcrumbs than you would if you make them yourself Bread than crumbs. buying it in that little can for a dollar and ninety eight cent. Yes, and it tastes better. <laughs> so, um, as we mentioned, 
Mm-hmm. These are ways to reduce waste, okay? Either so ways. when you guys get your recipe together for today, yes. keep in mind how many people you're cooking for, who's going to eat, how long you, you know, how many times you're going to eat it so you that you can make sure you get the right amount. consideration. Yes. And another, another key one, you know, just be on giving back. If you are the kind of person, that would just be like the final way to actually reduce waste would be donating donating to your community donate to those in need because i cannot stress this enough how so many people in the united states of america mm-hmm. waste food you know a lot of restaurants i was seeing that too that waste food the waste that we have here is just outrageous yeah. but it is outrageous and that just brings me to this portion of the show <laughs> that is sponsored by the sphere network are you starting your business and looking for a place to advertise, do you need to reach out to thousands of people across the world to build your brand or sell your product? If so, get your product placement and advertising needs handled right here at The Sphere. We offer a wide variety of content delivery platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Stitcher. Plus, we have a vast demographic reach within the United States, as well as modern countries across the globe. Our rich content and inspiring dialogue coupled with your strategic ad is surely to hit the mark every time. Call us today at area code 832-772-7789 or send an email over to advertise at the sphere. So whatever you're trying to advertise, we got y'all. Just make sure y'all email us. So our recipe for today, we talked about, is a sweet and spicy bacon wrapped chicken. So good. So um, this is a very popular appetizer that we are asked to make very Mm. often. So we put it in a recipe. And what we've done is, um, (laughs) bacon is a really big component on this dish. The right bacon. The bacon is a big deal. The bacon makes or breaks the dish, guys. Okay. You have to Um, buy the bacon. I've tried it with several different options. Listen when we tell you which one the bacon makes or breaks the, the deal. The bacon. So in a, a lot of our recipes, we have bacon as an optional topper or things yeah. of that nature. So what we brought bacon. for you guys today as the educational component, different types, types of, of bacon, bacon, just so that Come you on. understand. Because you cannot skimp on the bacon. You can't. Don't go in the store thinking you finna get that $3 and however much scent bacon. Three ninety nine. Three ninety nine For a traditional one pound. No. So um, mm-hmm. we we have different <laughs> types of bacon for different purposes. They cook differently. They taste differently. They have higher salt contents. They have higher grease contents. Yeah. So it really makes a difference. So we have a little slideshow for you guys. We're just going to show you six really common types of bacon. Um, all six we've cooked with before on the show. So one is a smoked bacon, mm-hmm. where you can either smoke your own bacon on the grill, or you can buy smoked bacon in the supermarket. And this is traditionally the regularly sliced smoked bacon that you get at the grocery store. Yeah. Um, the second is turkey bacon, um, a big hit for the health kick lately. So turkey bacon, turkey bacon. it's lower in fat than traditional pork bacon. Um, it's also an alternative made from turkey, basically. So it can be higher in sodium. So be careful. Everyone thinks it's healthier. It doesn't. Yeah taste as salty to me it does um but get turkey bacon easier. a lot of the time is higher in sodium than pork bacon yeah you so. get bloated easier with mm-hmm. that bacon so the second one is a slab bacon um here in the if you're watching you can see the video shows that it's sliced but if you're listening um and watching just for um educational purposes slab bacon is a slab of bacon slab. it's what you would get at the butcher it's not already sliced you actually slice it yourself you have to. The next is um, Canadian bacon. Canadian bacon. So this one is smoked and fully cooked pork loins. So it tastes more like a ham than a bacon, but it's ready to eat right out of the package because it's cooked oh, and man. smoked. So um, good. Pancetta is the next. This is an Italian cured pork belly. It's not smoked like our bacon is in the American um, states, but you can buy it sliced in spirals or you can buy it diced and or really in strips. Good. I feel like pancetta is really salty. I agree. It is. Very salty. <laughs> very, very, very salty. It's even saltier than turkey bacon. It is. But just a couple other types of bacon. I know mm-hmm. that we've uh, fat back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is a type of bacon. It comes from the... Um, the pig side so we have an image to show you guys where the bacon bacon comes comes from from on the pigs and we can show that to you just to give you kind of a heads up of where we're discussing these options where they're coming from so they mostly come from the pig belly the pig sides and then the pig back um and you can see the different type so belly bacon they have upper and lower belly bacon and then you have side bacon Hmm. so 
Um, American bacon is from the side. Fat back obviously comes from the side. <laughs> um, just a couple different options. I'm sorry, fat back is up, up there at the top. Back that. No, look at them ham hock back there. Yeah, we see the hocks. And the <laughs> yeah, okay. Wow. So. That but those are just the different types of bacon. So this is preparing you for the recipe that we're about to cook with our sweet and spicy bacon wrapped chicken. Okay. Ooh, yes. Okay. Can't wait. Can't so wait. So for our um, <laughs> recipe, the ingredients that we need, mm -hmm. we have the traditional way, boneless, skinless um, chicken thighs, cayenne pepper, chili powder, garlic powder, Salt and pepper, bacon, and brown mm, sugar. sugar. Okay. That is the traditional way, y'all. Yes. Yeah, so pretty simple recipe. Doesn't take a lot um, to and put it together. Should be but like it has the, as far as like the seasoning things that people should have in their pantries already. Mm -hmm. So so you can use, um, we put garlic powder. Mm -hmm. You can use fresh garlic if you choose. I use a, a garlic pepper mix personally. Or something like some of Chef Robin's kosher salts may be a good option to yeah. put in there. Yeah. So that's on the traditional way. And then you have the, the better, better way, way or the fancy, fancy way. way. Um, Everybody likes the fancy way. So <laughs> this recipe actually came from, I went to Fin Feather Fur, just the story behind the recipe. Okay. Um, it, fin Feather Fur is like a trade show of different meats. Mm -hmm. And we tasted a duck stuffed duck with Ooh. stuffed with cream cheese jalapeno peppers and shrimp i believe that sounds so good yes it was sounds amazing so good. it was absolutely amazing so what we did was we came up with this recipe so yes. a fancier way for the recipe would be to yes. use duck instead of chicken oh yeah um use cream cheese and jalapenos oh, and um all of the other seasonings would still be People the same people be sleeping on duck yes. it is so good so good and Orange so easy glazed to cook duck so easy to cook any kind of the duck. moisture content is so tender oh my gosh my um, stomach is grumbling right now because <laughs> and of course so the healthy good. way would be to use turkey yes. breasts instead of chicken mm -hmm. or you can use chicken breasts instead of chicken thighs yeah um you will still need the bacon, bacon? yeah um, not unless they want to agree to use turkey bacon but it won't crisp up you're gonna take away from the experience it won't even attach like the the bacon <laughs> cooks and renders out the fat and literally attaches mm -hmm. to the chicken thighs yeah. or chicken breasts so if you use turkey bacon there's h hardly any fat content in so it it's not so it stick. won't stick it won't crisp up i've tried it and it just basically falls off and so then you have that this sound like strip the bootleg. Of that sound like the bootleg version <laughs> it's of definitely <laughs> the bootleg version of the spicy wrap chicken. if you want that you just need to cook you some Turkey, bacon on the side and with, turkey and just have it, a deconstructed a deconstructed one so that that was going to be the other option so you don't have to wrap it in bacon i have that friends sound fun. well i have friends who don't <laughs> eat pork yeah. um and so you have to use i feel like you have to use pork bacon for this recipe so we've done the seasoning on the chicken mm -hmm. and just baked it and grilled it for them so you get the pile and the punch because it still has the spicy Everything and the is sweet still there. you just don't have the bacon Okay. Because you also remember we are rolling this in brown sugar. That's right. So you still get the spicy from the seasoning and, and the sweet from the from sugar the on the chicken. So it good. still tastes really good. It's delicious. It's just wow. it's just bomb <laughs> when you add that pork bacon. That bacon, just yes. bacon and butter, top notch. You can't replace it. Bacon. How do we use no butter? We talk butter. And we haven't used bacon. any butter, any oil in this recipe. The bacon creates all, all of that. All the fat you need. Mm -hmm. All that extra. Yep, love. and we're just using traditional American <laughs> bacon. Traditional slice, not thick slice. If you use thick slice, mm -hmm. it will look like turkey bacon. It will not cook it's through. Not wrap. It won't cook as fast as the chicken because we're yeah. using chicken thighs. And it won't get as crisp as fast. Then you're going to overcook your chicken. And you're going to dry chicken. Then your chicken going to be dry. Then yeah. you're going to have to supply a dip to go with that chicken wrap. Unnecessary. And it's unnecessary. Just follow our recipe, <laughs> follow our instructions, and you'll have a great appetizer. You'll be good to go. And it, what we've done is. Um, if you take a chicken thigh or a chicken breast and cut mm -hmm. it into halves or thirds, it's an appetizer portion. Yeah. If you take the chicken thigh or breast and leave it whole, it's a dinner portion. Mm -hmm. So this recipe can be used it's very both versatile. ways. Very yeah. versatile. So, mm -hmm. hey. Even if they want to stuff that chicken bacon wrap because the bacon is going to close it. Mm -hmm. Okay, stuff it Absolutely. with some of that. That's when you no. That's when you get fancy. You do that with the duck. <laughs> well, that's what we said. You can you can get fancy. That's stuff on the fancy that way. duck with the cream cheese, jalapeno. Pinos. What else you say? Had the sh maybe some shrimp in there? Yeah, sure. You stuff it, then you wrap it with bacon. Oh my gosh! Bomb. 
Oh my god. All right, so we're gonna head to the kitchen, guys. Okay, so we're getting ready to cook our sweet and spicy bacon wrapped chicken and um, print out your recipe, get your ingredients out. Let's head to the kitchen and cook. Welcome back to the kitchen portion of A La Carte. I'm your host, Chef Jones. And I'm your sh host, <laughs> Chef Laurinette. I was going to say I'm your chef. I am your chef. Chef Laurinette <laughs> with Helping Hands Food Delivery. And we are back in the kitchen with a, another um, great dish. I mean, they're all great dishes. I say that every week. So, <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's true, you guys. It is true. But this is a really simple dish. Um, this dish has gotten some great reviews. We've probably one of my most requested appetizers. Um and you can actually make it into a dinner portion just by altering how you assemble the dish. Mm -hmm. So we are making today sweet and spicy bacon wrapped chicken. It's yummy, a mouthful, yummy. but sweet and spicy. <laughs> and then savory bacon wrapped chicken. Boom. There you go. Slow right. motion. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. We got so it. So on our ingredients list today, we have kosher salt, cayenne pepper, chili powder, garlic, brown sugar, um, bacon, regular cut, not thick cut, not thin cut, and chicken breast. So, super simple list of ingredients, not anything too stressful or strenuous. We're going to assemble the chicken breast, um, the bacon wrapped chicken first by cutting the chicken breast into four pieces, and then we'll season it, wrap it, and dip it. Dip, baby. Sound like a dance move, don't dip, it? Baby, season, dip. wrap, and dip. dip. Yeah, okay, anyway. <laughs> All right. So, so Chef Robin's first going to start by cutting the chicken breast into four pieces. All right. So we're going to cut it straight down the middle, of course, even pieces. Mm -hmm. Or if you guys buy um, the chicken strips, then you can just cut it in half. Mm -hmm. If you get the thin sliced chicken breast, you can still cut it into fourths. If you use chicken thighs, it will be cut into thirds. So we have our chicken cut into four pieces here. Mm -hmm. And this is what it's going to look like. And we just add it to our tray for seasoning purposes. We are using kosher salt. Mm -hmm. And this is kosher salt, not table salt, so you can be a little generous. Garlic seasoning. I use a, a roasted herb garlic. It just gives it a little more pow if you will. gives it a little extra kick mm -hmm. that's what she's trying to say chili powder <laughs> and um this is one of the most important seasonings in this dish because the chili powder gives it that really smoky yummy flavor um, and it gives it the great color along with the bacon once mm -hmm. it cooks so so the chili powder we're going to be a little generous with that and then just for a little spice you do a <laughs> of the cayenne pepper a little whiff of it that's it that's it. Just light, simple. <laughs> Not too much. Cause because the chili powder has a little spice to it, too. So well, I mean, they could always, if you like it spicy, extra spicy, you can always take it there with that chili powder and mm -hmm. the cayenne pepper. But it's pretty spicy, so. And we're seasoning both sides the exact same way. Same way. With a sprinkle of chili and a whiff of cayenne. <laughs> And you can smell it in the air. Like, it makes the air spicy. Mm-hmm. That's why I don't need a whiff from me. A whiff of cayenne pepper. All right, so now the chicken is seasoned. So we're going to take our bacon slices. Now, depending on how big your chicken pieces are, you may want to cut the bacon slices in half. Because if you double and triple wrap the bacon slices, it won't get crispy. So, but our pieces are big enough to um, take a whole slice. And then we're going to start at one corner. Grip it. And then just overlay it slightly. Such technique with this chicken wrapping. Until you get a perfectly wrapped piece of chicken. Yep, and you just let it sit. You don't have to worry about sticking two pigs in it and all of that. Because it's going to stay wrapped if you wrap it this way. And that's what the seasoning helps to, um, to do as well. Helps and then the way you wrap it, it makes a difference in me being me i like to sit mine in the season and that fell off on the side so that the bacon picks up a little extra um. <laughs> a little extra um off that pan mm -hmm. and so these are really great for appetizers of course 
and like Chef Florida said, also for a dinner portion. Now, with the dinner portion, you wouldn't cut it into four pieces. You would actually keep the chicken breast whole, mm -hmm. season it whole on the front and the back side, and wrap it. You may uh, even use two pieces of bacon yeah. if you keep it whole, because you want to make sure you cover Completely. the entire piece of chicken. Yes. So that looks awesome. All right. So we have four pieces of wrapped chicken. Now we're going to take our brown, brown sugar. sugar. And make sure you don't have any hard crumble pieces. When you leave brown sugar out, it'll crumb, get hard. It's just like any sugar. It will. It will. But the trick, you can put that white bread on it. Now be generous with the brown sugar. So I put mine in. I press it in. Put some on top. And because this actually makes the sauce while it cooks in the oven. Looks so good. And I like to pat it on there and leave a little extra. And then sit it right back in that extra seasoning that was on the tray. That looks delicious. It can get a little messy with the brown sugar, but yeah. It's okay. It's okay with cooking. It's going to taste so good afterwards. And leave them a little close together as well. Because normally when you do this, it's more than four pieces. Um, if you do a pack of chicken, it'll be roughly... Um, a five pack would be 20 pieces of bacon wrapped chicken. So mm -hmm. leave them a little That's pretty good. close together. It helps with the crispiness on the bacon when you cook it. That looks awesome. Yep. And it also helps to caramelize. That's what this brown sugar is going to do mm -hmm. in the oven. It's going to brown it along with the seasoning that we put on there, the cayenne and the chili powder. It's going to look really really good so so that's it now it's wrapped and we're going to put it into the oven um you want it on the center rack not too high up because the bacon the chicken needs to cook all the way through as well as the bacon get crispy so you want it on the center rack cook it at 375 for about 25 minutes 25 to 35 minutes depending on your oven and how thick your chicken breast is our chicken breasts are pretty thick so we'll leave yeah. them in for about 35 Five minutes. minutes okay so you're gonna go right into the oven oh yeah and our oven was preheated, so it's ready to cook. And surprise, surprise, surprise. Yay, we have already provided. These are our finished ones. Set that I'll take these away. Now they're going to shrink a little because it's chicken. And bacon. And oh, bacon. Yeah. But, bam. That is the finished product. <laughs> Now you can garnish it. We did. We garnished ours with a little Italian parsley. Mm -hmm. um, you could put some oregano, just slight little yeah. bit of oregano on top. Yeah. Or um, you can even throw a little cheese on top of that. Mm -hmm. Cheese, Parmesan, cheese. grated cheese. Yes, yes, yes. These would even be great on top of some pasta. Pasta, of <laughs> course. So we've learned. Yes, um, we have. <laughs> so you have uh, sweet and spicy bacon wrapped chicken, and we actually you want to cut into a piece and show them. Yeah. Let me so get another gonna, knife for them. It's going to be crispy. Um, the bacon is. It has that sticky. You. Yeah. Another knife. Yeah, that'll work. For them. So you can see. There. So 25 minutes, the chicken is now cooked all the way through. The bacon is nice and crispy. The brown sugar is caramelized. That looks and awesome. And it's yummy, guys. This is, this is like... And you see the bacon <laughs> is completely on the chicken. Yes. You know, usually if you cut into uh, something like this that's wrapped with bacon, mm -hmm. the bacon tends to fall off. Yes. So it's like you got to try to scavenge for your bacon and still eat the chicken. This is a guaranteed piece of bacon in every bite. <laughs> that's why we wrap it all the way around and mm -hmm. use a full slice of bacon. But again, just make sure that your chicken pieces are big enough to sustain that. So, yep. So, as always, make sure you're following us on vSphere, um, vSphere TV. You can use hashtag a la carte. You can find this recipe with the ingredients and let us know how you like it, guys. Like the bacon wrapped chicken. Yes. All right. All right, you guys. It was good cooking with you, and we will see you next week.